Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kathy Hanford, and today is September 15, 1998. Had to think about that for a minute. Um, <coughs> okay, tonight we're going to be interviewing my dad, Preston Hanford Sr. And um, Preston, I mean dad, <laughs> uh, we know that you were born in Crow's Landing, California on September 8th right 1925 right. <clears throat> and I want you to tell us a little bit about anything that you remember in those earlier years like I know that you've told us that you moved a lot so just give us your own version of what happened there for a while well we were like gypsies and we moved I I would suspect that we moved probably once a month until we got to a certain ranch but I remember uh, living in uh, Ukiah. No, I don't remember living in Ukiah, but the folks told me about living there. And uh, we lived on 3,200 acres, and Dad used to catch wild hogs for a living. And then we moved to... Now, well, wait a minute, Dad. Did you say that Aunt, Aunt Lucille. Lucille was born in Ukiah? My sister Lucille was born in Ukiah. Okay, and she's the next one down from you. Yes. Okay. My brother okay. Jack was already born. Was he born in uh, Crow's Landing also? No. Do you know where he was born? No. no. Okay. I do, but... Where was he born? I mean, I wrote it down somewhere, but I don't remember no. now. Huh? Yeah. Uh, the house burned down in Ukiah. On the 3200? On a, a place called Cow Mountain. What happened? Then we moved to Ukiah. And that's where Lucille was born. And now tell us about the house burning down. What happened that day? Remember that thing about the three shots? Uh, my uh, my dad told my mother to fire the rifle three times if something should happen where he needed she to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of firing three times, mother just kept firing the rifle until all the shells were gone. And they thought it was some wood chopper way off someplace, and they did not return. They went on hunting wild hogs. That's what happened. Oh. And I was just a baby, a year old, and they they uh, went in the burning house and took me out. Who did? Grandma? My mother. And uh, whoever else was there, which I've forgotten who it was. Then... Uh, Another thing that happened when I was born in Crow's Landing, uh, they put me in the oven to keep me warm. Oh. That's a story that they told. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I don't know where we moved from there, except that when I know that when I was about three years old, we was living, and I do remember this, we was living in uh, Susanville. Okay, now wait, hold on. You know that little picture with you with the apple in your mouth? Yeah. Was that in, do you think... Because you were walking, so you were probably about a year old. Maybe up in Ukiah, or do you think you were still down by uh, Cross Landing? I think that was in Ukiah. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, <coughs> and then we moved, I think, uh, down to the valley uh, for a period of time. And then we moved to Susanville. Now, the pictures where you have you and Jack and Lucille and all the horses and all that, you know those pictures? Uh, is that, do you think that was probably in Susanville, or do you know where that was? No, that was on the what we call the mountain ranch up between Auburn and Grass Valley. But that's later on. At a place called Wolf. Okay. Yeah, oh. that's when we got to be... Uh, a little bit older. That's when we got to be like six years old. Okay, so go ahead with your other <clears throat> story then. Well, we lived in uh, Susanville, and the folks were milking cows there. I remember that because I remember looking out at the barn... And I remember it was freezing, cold weather, very cold. And uh, and then we moved, and then we moved to Los Angeles. You're kidding? No. I didn't know you yeah, we moved to Los Angeles, and I remember in those days I remember uh, association with Mexicans and uh, hot tamales and uh, the Mexican food. Now, how old were you then? 
out? It's before I ever started with school, like I was about four. Okay. I remember down there that we crawled under a schoolhouse and then got scared and got out of there. Huh. And, uh, and I also remember uh, we were in, in Los Angeles and a bee, a bees got after us kids. And I remember this friend of mine had the bee going in his mouth and going out and coming back and going in his mouth and going back out. Oh and he was just screaming and hollering and we were running down the road. <laughs> and I was watching him with this bee getting on him, getting after him. Oh my goodness. This is really true. I remember that. And then we, then we moved, uh, I don't know how many different places, but I remember one place we moved on to it was called uh, the islands down at a place called Bradford Island. And uh, we, uh, we were not going to school yet there because uh, I remember Dad going down there and we stayed there one night. At Bradford Island? At Bradford Island. And the, the reason we had to get out of there is because the mosquitoes were so thick that uh, Dad's Holstein cattle all turned black with these mosquitoes on them. And we were just a swat mosquitoes and Dad was swatting mosquitoes and he says, I got on getting out of here. And so we, we left there the next day. We only stayed there one day, one night. What about all your cows? Well, we moved the cattle, too. We moved out. We moved in and moved out. How did you move your cattle? Between two sons. We moved them out. We drove them out. Oh, you did? And we drove them back over to Ukiah. Or not Ukiah, but uh, Turlock. And I remember that we lived in Turlock. And that's where a lot of our relatives are buried, right? Yes. Our grandfather, my grandfather's buried in Turlock. And a lot of our relations are buried down there in Turlock, where Dad had bought a, a land down there to bury uh, his people in. He had bought a whole big plot. Then uh, I remember my first day at school. Mother had dressed us all up and dressed me all up in a little sailor suit. Now this is when I'm six. Where were you? Where were you living? Turlock. Oh, in Turlock. Okay. That's where you started the school. Yeah. And I remember this little Oki girl looking at me, and, and I just looked over at her, and she uh, she got mad, and so she came over and beat me up. Beat me on the legs until I wet my pants. Oh. That's exactly what happened. And you hated Okies ever since. Yeah. <laughs> then... Uh, oh. It was some time after that, that I remember being in the third grade and Mrs. Benny was our teacher. And uh, and the government had came along and took all of my dad's cattle for TB. And I remember my dad uh, out there, I, I love my dad an awful lot, see. And I remember dad uh, uh, taking his hat off and just wringing wet with sweat hot out there and here they were pitchforking our cattle into the trucks and dad he was always telling them that there was nothing wrong with this cow or that cow and and then uh when it all got over with why we were i remember us all being in the house and dad was saying well we're going to move so far out back in the hills they'll never find me again and mother she didn't want to move back up in the hills and Dad was telling all of us kids he'd get us all a horse. We would all have a horse. We had a horse on that rancher. Her name was Bessie. But he said he'd get us all a horse. So we moved up to this mountain ranch. Trying to bribe you. Yeah. We had to open 16 gates to get into that place. And there was 1,200 acres on that ranch. And uh, us kids went to school in a buggy. I don't know how we ever fit into a buggy, five of us. We must have been awful small. Did you guys make, did your dad make the buggy? No, no. He bought it? He would buy a buggy and then he'd have to buy wheels for it because when we would go around the corners, you know why, we'd go around real fast. 
And we were kind of raised there on that ranch. You know, that was the time when when we would uh, come now, where to was understand. This ranch it was between Auburn and Grass Valley at a place called Wolf. Wolf, okay. And you were probably what age to what age there? I think that I was about, uh, <clears throat> I think I was about nine. About nine. Maybe about eight, nine. To about 13. And that's where the picture was taken with the horses and you kids standing up there. No. The picture that you're talking about, I think, uh, where us kids look so shaggy, that was taken down on the river ranch after we moved out of the mountain ranch. Out of Wolf? Yes. Oh, okay. When we moved down to the valley. Um, after we moved down on the river ranch, that's on the Sacramento River, we used to take our horses and jump them off a cliff 20 feet out into the river. Sacramento? And go clear under the water. And uh, and then the come the then the horse would come up a horse will swim straight up when he's coming up out of the depths of water, and uh, us kids were very good horsemen. You know we all knew how to ride so very good, and uh, we would swim our horses clear across the river and try to put them up put them up the bank on the other side, and then we would uh, I, I wore out my horse one time and I and, and I. I thought that I had just about just about done him in. He, when I got back to the other side, he was just trembling mm -hmm. from strain. That mm -hmm. He tried to go up the bank three or four times and couldn't make it and would fall back down in the water. Mm -hmm. And then uh, us kids used to... Well, what happened to him? What happened? He was he got weak, you know. He got real you, weak. Did you get him out, though? Yeah. Yeah, well, I swam him out back. But we used to swim that Sacramento River back and forth and and us kids didn't think nothing of it nowadays they're everybody's scared to death getting in the river you know in the sacramento river afraid that they'll drown Did you personally swim or oh yeah we would swim i would swim the river myself you know all of us boys and girls too swim the sacramento river and swim back and forth and i remember lucille and betty I think it was Lucille and Betty that was uh, almost got drowned once, and, and Jack and Eddie saved them. I wasn't, I didn't go out there to save them. The, the other, my two brothers went there and saved them. And then we moved again from that ranch several different times through through the years. We had a dairy and. Uh, and to call the Tree Haven Dairy where we bottle our own milk. And I used to bottle the milk and cap it. And then we'd take it on the route. We'd take it in the truck until uh, Crystal Creamy ran into us, you know, with their truck. Now, Dad, but that was later on. What did Grandpa do in all those years? Was he just like milking cows or trading or what? What kind of work was he actually doing? Well, that's what he was doing. He was... Uh, he was uh, milking cows and trading, uh, doing all kinds of things like that. Now, when we were on the old mountain ranch, he was working for the WPA. You know, that's the Workmen's Progressive Administration. That's what they call the WPA. That was a government job. And uh, then as we came now, along through the Depression. Let me stop you one second. Yeah, I was going to say, the Depression, you were born in 25. And when did the Depression? 29. It hit in 29, and so you were only four. Yeah. And that's when you were in, okay, so I get the picture here. Yeah, and then we came <laughs> along through the Depression, and we didn't have nothing. We were pretty poor. You know, we didn't have very much. And you know the book that you've got about us yeah. and going back through? We didn't have that. We didn't know anything about that. And... Uh, we were so very poor, and I, I really, myself, I felt kind of inferior because of us kids not having any good clothes and this and that. But yet you lived on these huge ranches, 3,200 yeah. acres. Yeah. And, I well, mean, nowadays nobody has a plot of ground, hardly. Yeah, well, you see, in those days, Dad, you see that the, the farmers had lost their places, and Dad, he would go to a banker, 
and he'd tell them, I'll get, y'all bring my cattle in there and I'll get this place on the pay and proposition. But he had no idea of doing very much like that. He would just move his cattle in there and then he would pick up anything that he could here and there and about just to make a living. And this is really the truth about the matter. Uh, he would pick up whatever's left on that place and uh, move it off on to another place and we went from one ranch to another. That's exactly what we did. We lived in, we've lived probably in, oh golly, uh, 50 or 60 different places. Uh, I can remember an awful lot of them, but there's a lot of places that I don't even remember that we lived. And in fact, when I talked to my brothers when they were alive, uh, they would mention places that I didn't even remember. We lived on a, a place called the River Ranch down by Modesto. We lived in Tulare County. We've lived in uh, just all over the state of California mm -hmm. and into Nevada. We had a ranch in Nevada. Uh, we lived up there and, uh, and we had a house burned down up there. And uh, that's when I had to go live with some, some neighbors. You know, I had to go live with the Smiths. Where was and this again? This was in uh, Nevada. Oh, yeah. A place called Smith yeah. Valley. Why did you have to go live with neighbors? Because we didn't have no house to live in. Oh. And uh, the folks were living in a chicken house. And Dad cemented the floor with uh, sand, and, and Mother would sweep it out every time she'd sweep. She'd sweep out the, the you know, and we were having a very poor she time. Really swept the floor out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she swept the floor right out of the chicken house. She swept the floor out the door. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in those days, in those days, we had old cars, old Model Ts, and, uh... Tell us that story about when you did go live with those Smiths and how you'd watch for your... It was you and Aunt Lucille, wasn't it? No, that was just me. Oh, just you? And, uh, at the Smiths, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Smith had a trap line. Now, wait, first of all, how old were you at this time? I was, uh... That particular time, I was uh, a freshman in high school. So you were probably about 13 or so? Yeah, 14. about around in there. Because, see, we moved very fast. Mm -hmm. And and I had a trap line. I'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and and I would walk my trap line, and and, uh, and none of the kids wanted me to get on the bus because I smelled like a skunk. <laughs> you see, I would catch these skunks, and then I would skin them. And in those days, you could get a dollar and a quarter for 75 cents a hide for these skunks. So you set a line down where you think skunks go, and you have traps on this line? Well, Or is you, it just the traps set in a row? Traps would be set oh. throughout the sagebrush. Oh, okay. Where, where I thought that some animal might come, and I would be catching, uh, trying to catch coyotes, and I never did. You only caught skunks? Mostly skunks and rabbits or something. I forget now what I did catch. But anyway, we were up there at that ranch for some time, maybe a year and a half. Our house burned down up there. and Again? Yeah. And we were milking cows up there and putting up hay. And uh, I have lots of memories of that country. Cold in the wintertime very cold up there in Smith Valley. Why don't you shut this thing off? <laughs> the frailties of man. Okay, we'll go back to the mountain ranch. Is it working now? Yeah. Well, like I just said before, I was telling this story about uh, um, how that us kids would uh, take the buggy to school and get up in the... Uh, fig tree yeah you know there was a fig tree there about halfway and uh, and we would get up in this fig tree and then pretty soon Jack my brother Jack he would we, he we called him Raymond then he would get down and he would get in the buggy and then he'd holler at me and then I knew what the story was which was that he was going to run away from me every time that I'd try to catch him 
<laughs> so I climbed down out of the tree, and I'd get down there, and then, and I'd walk along behind the buggy, you know, and and I'd try to get as close as I could, and then he would, then I would take off at a dead run to catch to catch the buggy, and he would whip the horse up, and and then I would miss out. I couldn't I couldn't be fast enough, and this went on, you know, this would go on for maybe a mile or two, you know. Uh -huh. And then he would laugh, you know, and then I'd get mad, and oh, God, <laughs> we'd have a terrible time with it all. But why did you keep doing it if you were in the tree and you knew it was going to happen? Well, you know, he was smarter than I was, you know. <laughs> I guess I was just kind of a dumb dumb. In other words, I was eating fish. And, uh, and then... Uh, well, How much older was Uncle Jack than you? Just year? one year. Oh, one year. What, he was 11 there. months. October. Yeah. 11 months. Oh, yeah. This other voice over here is my, my mother, Iris. Yeah. <laughs> you can park in here, Mom. And then I don't know where we went from that story. Where well, you were talking about uh, how you... Ha okay, wait a minute. Now, that was there. Where'd they go, Mom? Where'd he go next? From that story about the buggy. Well, I was talking about the the pig that. The pig. It yeah. wasn't a pig. It was a hog. This thing <laughs> weighed a good 600 pounds or more. I think it was 650 pounds. And this hog had walked off over to our neighbor's place, which was about five miles, to Jess Sanford, Jess Sanford. And uh, Dad had went over there, and so he told me he said. That's pretty good. The Hanford. It, and the Sanford. Sanford, yeah. <laughs> Jesse Sanford still lives up there, you know. He's still right there on that ranch. And and the dad, he told me, he says, drive that hog home. So I drove I drove him down the road, up the road, up over the mountains and down and over and over and over and over, you know. And finally it got to a place where this hog refused to go. He got hot. When a hog gets hot, they won't. They won't go. They they turn on you. So he turned on me, and he was chasing me back towards Sanford's ranch. So I had to get over on the other side of him and punch him with a stick and make him chase me toward our place. And this is what I'd done for a mile or so, and then finally he went down over this hill and into these uh, live oak trees. And when he got down in there, then I had to go down in there and and make sure that that uh, I would have running space so that I could get away from him this was a terrible thing for a young kid to get involved in and I and I had to uh, punch him with a stick and then I had to run and I had to make sure that I wasn't going to run into a little tree or something and he would make four or five big jumps toward me with his mouth open you know and like he's going to eat me up, which I knew he would if he got catch me. And uh, he had tusks on him that, oh, a good two, or two, to two to two and a half inches long. And uh, finally, he, finally he decided to go on down the hill and go home, and, and I just stepped off to the side and just let him, let him go past me and let him go on down, just lumbering on down the, the hill, a great big old... And then I remember my dad decided to kill him, and uh, my brother came out there with a 22 and shot him three times in the head. And he had he had he had uh, a bone on his head that was probably about an inch thick. And uh, those those 22 shells didn't even face him, so he went in and got a 30 30 30 rifle and shot him twice, and I think it was twice. And then he had to get in there and cut his throat. Now, if you talk to people that have raised a lot of hogs, uh, they can attest to all this kind of stuff that it takes a lot to kill a big boar hog, you know, that weighs like 600. Now, I don't know if he only shot him once with the rifle or if he shot him twice. I think I, I kind of thought it was twice, but maybe it was only once, and then he got in there and cut his throat. But he was a big, ugly boar hog. He was a pole in China. So did you and keep that meat in the have a yes. We, no, no. We didn't have no freezer. See, we would, we would take that meat and uh, and cut it all up, and and Dad hung some of it in the well. You know, that's where it would keep cool. And then they, I don't know what happened after that. What they done with it, or 
or what happened. Uh, they, they put it up, you know, they, they had ways of putting it up, and and uh, and I just don't really and truly remember what happened to the whole hog, you know. Mm -hmm. All I remember is when they butchered him. And they might have taken him in someplace and had certain things done. But then we mount cows up there, and my brother Jack oh. and my brother Raymond and I, you know, we had to mount the cows and skim the milk, and, and then every week we would take it into Hanson, and, well, that was Crystal Creamery to old man Hanson. And there was a little boy out there at that time, and he would hide over there by the docks. And I would hide behind the truck like, and we would look at one another. And uh, it was way after the war uh, when we were in business down here on the ranch, uh, hauling material, and we were hauling to Crystal Creamery. and and. And I got a call, and they said, well, Mr. Hansen is on the line. This is, this is a story, it's a true story, you know. And uh, this guy, he says, uh, do you remember coming in with your father and coming over to the dock and you see a little kid running around there? And, you know, I kind of thought I was talking to Mr. Hansen. And uh, I says, yeah, I remember, I remember that little kid there. And, and uh, he was explaining to me about, you know, uh, me me being there and seeing this kid, me hiding behind the truck and the little kid hiding kind of behind the docks. And pretty soon he told me, he says, well, I'm that little kid. So he was Mr. Hansen, second, you know, the, uh -huh. the next, yeah. the next, the boy. And uh, so we had a nice talk, you know, there. And, and uh, but he had remembered that because see how he found out is he looked at the, name that was on the cans of cream oh, you know the cans yeah. had our name on there and he came over after we had left and he'd read this name and he remembered that name and uh i know one of the stories you told that is about uh kink and the little car oh the uh the time that when we were in school up there in the mountain ranch, there was five kids in our family that went to school. And the teacher had to keep two kids to keep school open. You gotta have seven kids to keep a school open. And uh, uh, the two kids was called Jack and Kink. And the Kink was her boy, the teacher's boy. And I've forgotten her name. But anyway, uh, this kink one day he came out and he jumped on my back. I was playing on the ground Something I don't know what I was playing and uh, He jumped on my back and and I and I got up groaning and carrying on and then I kicked him in the stomach and down he went and Then his mother came out there just mad and she was she was trying to catch me. Well, she's a great big fat lady She didn't have a chance <laughs> so <laughs> So us kids, we all got, we all went and jumped on our horses and we ran away from school. And we got up on top of Bear Mountain. That's a mountain that's between the school and our place. And we got up on top of this Bear Mountain and we looked way back down there and, and that car looked to be about an inch long, just a little tiny thing. And said, well, there she go and she's going to go over and tell dad and mom. And, and us kids, we were way up on this hill, and I remember that the flowers were kind of in bloom at that time, some flowers, and we all laid down and went to sleep, <laughs> way up there on the mountains. And that's the truth. It was like, uh, I don't know, it must have been around 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, you know, this thing happened early on in the morning. And uh, it was certainly a different kind of life. You know, it was absolutely different than what, most kids have and uh, it was a thing I believe that I believe myself that this kind of life gives an intellect that is far better than an education this this kind of life that we had it was very uh, unique you know and different and I remember one time in the winter time when we had a big flood the creeks were flooding and 
And us kids, we wanted to go to school for some reason. I never forget that. I remember why, but we got in the buggy, and uh, and Dad didn't know it. He was off doing something, and and uh, we went to school, and we got by this first creek, and the second creek, our our buggy washed down the hill, down down with the water, and got caught. Uh, the front wheel and the back wheel the, the tree went in the middle and our horse floundered and uh, and we had a terrible time uh, getting him unhitched and finally we got the horse unhitched then we looked back over and here was dad with a team of horses and a wagon who had came down there to catch us kids and make us come home it was the winter time you know and it was